order. Welcome to the October 15th Durango City Council meeting. We're happy to have you all here. And thank you for those of you tuning in live on DGov. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, and before we start tonight, um, I want to remember again our civil and respectful dialogue that we promote through our Civility First Pledge program, our new banners that color our new boardroom. Thank you to our Community Relations Commission for that. And, and as I start tonight, I'm just going to just do a little bit, something a little bit different because it's been a big moment this week, I think, for the community. And I'm just going to do a small pause of remembrance, if you will, for our friend, Ed Sink. And um, I bring this up at the beginning because this is the time we talk about civility and respect. And Ed was an amazing leader for our community. And a lot of us, some of us had the pleasure of working with him and calling him a friend. And I can tell you that in his communication and all of his dialogue with the community, he was open, he was transparent, he was very forthright, he was respectful. You always knew where Ed stood. Even if he didn't share the same perspective, he, he was very clear in why he was promoting what he was promoting. But he was a great community leader and he was a servant for a lifetime for this community. And I think we can all, I look to him as a role model and I espouse to kind of um, carry on some of those traits that Ed did for this community. So just a moment of thanks to Ed. And with that, Ms. Phillips, may we please have a roll call? Councillor Petit. Councillor Baxter. Present. Councillor Noseworthy. Present. Councillor Brookie. Here. Mayor Yusuf. Here. City Council, do we have any actual or perceived conflicts of interest this evening? Any of our issues? Seeing none. I'm gonna move into public participation. We've amended our agenda to have public participation at the beginning of our meeting um, so that the community has the opportunity to participate before we get into some of our presentations and proclamations. Um, and until the community gets used to this change in the agenda, we will have public participation both at the beginning and in the normal section on our agenda in agenda item number eight. So you may speak in whichever item you speak to, but we're gonna start now with those who have signed up. And if anyone else would like to sign up to this list before I start, should we see? Has anyone signed up on this list that would like to sign up? Anybody else? Okay. Um, then we're gonna move on to public participation. Um, this section of the agenda is set aside for people to make comments and or ask questions for items that are not otherwise listed on the agenda. We do limit comments to three minutes. We don't mean to be distracting, but we are trying to run efficient meetings. When I call you forward, if you will join us at the dais and speak your name and address clearly for the record, we would sure appreciate it. And uh, with that, I am going to start with Durango High School. Jude Pruitt, please. Hi. Um, hello, my name is Jade Pruitt. Jade, sorry. It's Durango <laughs> High School at 2390 Main Avenue. I deliver monthly reports at the third Tuesday of the month, and this is the October report. Uh, DHS Choir is honored to have been accepted to sing with the National High School Choir at Carnegie Hall in March of 2020. 23 students have decided to take the trip together with their director, Ms. Lyon. Durango High School is one of eight schools selected from the state to participate in Homegrown Talent Initiative. It's a grant to support the gathering of stakeholder input to help guide our schools to develop, implement, and improve on existing programs. Our site-based team has a focus on developing school-based enterprises and work-based learning opportunities, including job site visits, job shadowing, internships, and apprenticeships. If you are interested in helping Durango High School better prepare our students for the future and would be willing to contribute your feedback, please get a hold of Brandon Thurston or Melinda Wood by contacting Durango High School. Game on Homecoming is this week. We will be hosting a tailgate on Friday prior to the volleyball game at five o'clock and the football game at seven o'clock. Anyone from the community is welcome. We also encourage attendance at the football game. Um, ad in addition to our halftime show is we will have an elementary homecoming king and queen this year. Uh, there's also a soccer game on Saturday at one o'clock. Please come and support all of our athletes as the fall sports season come to a close. During this student council, we'll be partnering with MIAC, participating in a rake and run on the 26th of October 
Any students can come help as we visit random houses around the community and rake leaves from their front yard. The Native American Club is hosting a powwow November 16th, and they look forward to seeing community members in attendance. At the beginning of the month, DHS held a blood drive, receiving over 50 donations, and a pizza with the principal, with over 50, where over 50 students discuss school safety. Troop 1096's production of The Little Mermaid opens November 8th through the 22nd. To buy tickets or become a theater patron, please visit their website that can be found on the DHS website. And finally, DHS will be hosting a Veterans Day Assembly on November the 8th, where we honor the veterans who serve our school and the community. We would love to extend an invitation to City Council as we hope they attend our assembly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, uh, Bill LaMare, please, from the Library Advisory Board. Bill LaMare, 2018 East 2nd Avenue, Durango. It'll come as no surprise to council that uh, I'm here to support uh, Sunday openings uh, for the library and, uh, and ask request that that be retained in your proposed 2020 budget. So the, as I understand, the 2020 budget that, that has been proposed to council accommodates additional library personnel, which would in turn accommodate the opening of the library on Sunday. Sundays. And the Library Advisory Board has asked me to relay to you, in the most earnest terms I can muster, <coughs> our wish that you keep this in the 20, this provision in the 2020 budget. As an advisory board, we are heartened to hear in the newspaper and through other sources that this council as composed is more interested or, or is especially interested in engaging with the volunteers on its advisory boards and commissions. And we're heartened to hear that. And we hope that you take it to heart when we recommend, as, a, as he says, as the library advisory board, that you do keep that provision in the 2020 budget. Um, a whole generation, what we would say to you is a whole generation of Durango young people are growing up thinking that libraries are, as a matter of course, closed on Sundays. But uh, I suspect that many of you growing up had a, a library that was open on Sunday, and I think that we can do that again. I think that, uh, uh, again, please, so, uh, again, the, I think probably many of you grew up with uh, Sunday, uh, being able to go into the library on Sunday, we think that you, we should be able to do that again. So again, please keep Sunday openings for the accommodation for that in your 2020 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no questions, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for your well, comments. Thank you, Bill. All right, thank you. Um, I hope I pronounced this okay, Nami Banderas. the Pueblos, Hopi, Zuni, and the Diné Nation. We think it is important to provide this acknowledgement because the narratives of this land and region have long been told from one dominant perspective without full acknowledgement of the tribes who lived on this land before. Thank you for your attention and respect and acknowledgement of this important history. We would like to invite the Durango community to the Native American Heritage Month Powwow at Durango High School on Saturday, November 16, 2019. This is a one-day event that includes a Native American art market, which opens at, to the public at 10 a.m. The gourd dance session begins at 12 p.m., followed by grand entry at 6 p.m. Thereafter, category dance contest will commence through 11 p.m. During the powwow, graduation high school students 
will be recognized and military veterans in attendance will be honored with a song and small gift from the Native American Club. NAC of DHS and the school's school district's Native American Parental Advisory Committee, Committee have collaborated to host this powwow during National Native American Heritage Month of November in hopes that the community will learn about indigenous people in our area. From Native American Heritage Month, Gov. One of the one of the very prominent of an American Indian Day was Dr. Arthur C. Parker, a Seneca Indian who was the director of the Museum of Arts and Science in Ro Rochester, New York. He persuaded the Boy Scouts of America to set aside a day for the first Americans. The first American Indian Day in the state was declared on the second Saturday in May 1916 by the governor of New York, and Illinois legislators enacted such a day in 1919. Presently, several states have designated Columbus Day as Native American Day, but it has continued to be a day we observe without any recognition as a national legal holiday. In 1990, President George H.W. Bush approved a joint resolution designating November 1990 National American Indian Heritage Month. Similar proclamations have been issued each year since 1994. The National Congress of American Indians expert expressed that November is a time to celebrate the rich and diverse cultures, traditions, and histories, and to acknowledge the important contributions of Native people. Heritage Month is an opportune time to educate the general public about tribes to raise a general awareness about the unique challenges Native people have faced both historically and in the present, and, in, and the ways in which tribal citizens have worked to conquer these challenges. The purpose of the Community Relations Commission is to promote respect and acceptance for diversity within the city. We would ask, we would ask that you allow us to bring a cultural activity to the city calendar of events so that we may bring awareness to our wonderful community and share our culture in this manner. Indigenous student volunteers for the Fort Lewis community have helped tremendously. College students are busy with their own schedules and may not may not be from our community, which makes their efforts so much more meaningful, and we are so very thankful for each of them. We are also reaching out to our own Durango community members and business businesses willing to offer any assistance to help make us make this the best first annual Powell held at Durango High School. We appreciate the opportunity to come before the City Council, and we hope you will all attend in celebration and support of National Native American Heritage Month. Thank you for your time. Thank you very Thank much. You. I have a question. Yes. Is there a time? Uh, is there a specific time or is it all day on Saturday? It's all day. It starts at 10, uh, I believe. Starts at 10? Yes. Great. It's in the at Durango High School in the yes. parking lot? Or in the gym. In the gym. Yes. In, okay, good. Inside the Yes. Thank you. Sounds great. And a craft marketplace. Yes. As well. Thank you very much. All right, and we're moving on to our proclamations and presentations, and we're gonna start with the Friends of the Library Bookmark Contest winners. Yeah. Okay, my name is Miley Kane. I'm with the Friends of the Library, and... Uh, my name is Evan Schertz, and I'm with Maria's Bookshop. I'm Nancy Pick, and I'm also with the Friends. And we're about to do the most fun thing we get to do all year. <laughs> it really showcases the talent of our, our uh, students in the area. And we have this bookmark con contest that is open to all students going to school or even homeschoolers. And uh, we had so many bookmarks this year. It gets really hard to decide which is the best of the best. So now I have the best of the best. And I'd like to um, have Camilla come up. She is our runner-up for elementary school and love that this.
and it's, it's all in Spanish too. Can I show? Can I? Can I show off? See, because you're so good, I could just put it on. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Yes. We have something for you. Camilla, we thought that this bookmark was so great that um, I'd like to give you a water bottle and $50 to Maria's Moon Shop. <laughs> we did not get the bookmarks in the mail today. I was so disappointed. But when I get them, I'll call you and I'll give you 30 of them. Okay? And then you can give them to your family or at school, but they aren't officially going to be shown to the public until our book sale on November uh, 15th and 16th. Okay? And then we're going to put this up in our library so everybody can see it. I need to... And then we're going to take oh. it and we're going to put it up at Maria's bookshop. So yes, everybody. and it's going to be up in Maria. Would you go stand there and have your picture taken? A photo op with city council. <laughs> there. <clears throat> Thank you. Very nice. Congratulations. Oh, Very good. We'll probably see you every year now. You'll have to enter our contest. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Camilla. Oh, I better keep it. <laughs> okay. And our winner for the elementary, can I have Rach, uh, Eliana come up? Can you tell us about your bookmark? Um, I just had the idea when I read the Narnia book, because I think it's a really cool movie and book. Um, mm, yes. So I wanted to copy that, because I feel like when you're reading a book, it really just brings you into another world. That's right. Very nice. That is beautiful. Yeah. And, oh. and Camilla, I have uh, $100 for you Ooh. to Marie's bookshop. So come find some more books. and. Get my lost in the book. Oh that is just so neat. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, that'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And our next, now we're going to move to middle school. And our middle school runner-up was not able to be here tonight, but her dad came, right? And it's Nola Bur Burnight. And I need to tell you, she is a second-time winner. When we're judging the bookmarks, we don't look at names or anything. We just look at the at the drawing and what the saying that they've had. So she won once again. <laughs> Orchestra. It's a busy, busy gal. And that's for no one's work. Yep. And then do you want to take his picture? <laughs> okay. Representing the family. Can we see it too? Yeah, thank you. No, will you show us? Yes. Can we see it? Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. I forgot to show you. <laughs> and our winner for the middle school is Rachel Ager. You won it this time with Isabella Allende's. Can you tell us a little bit about your bookmark? Um, I go to the library a lot, so. I bet you'd like to go on Sundays too, huh? <laughs> 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 um, that was unfair. Book, I like really related to the library and stuff I like to do. So, what I chose is great. Can, can you read, read the same you've got on the Rachel? The library is inhabited by spirits that come out of the pages at night. 
And she is from Ignacio. You're a first time person that came from Ignacio. You want to tell us about your bookmark? Um, it's from like a poems book. Um, and I just like, uh, my mom is a poet, so I've always been like drawn to poetry. So this is one of the quotes that I just um, was like really connected to because it like, I think it relates a lot to, the, to today's society. Um, yeah, we kind of, I feel like a lot of us um, lose sight of like, that we're like all beautiful um, creations and um, we should like remember that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Great, please. Okay, um, we are all born so beautiful. The greatest trage tragedy is being convinced that we are not. Isn't that anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I hope more from your school enter our contents. Okay. And then we have our winner of the high school. And I'll tell you, it was so hard to decide. And our winner this year is Lauren Hastings. Look at this powerful, we just thought it was so powerful. And can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, we had a project in our class where we had to make the bookmark for a contest sign. Oh. Um, and I picked an author that writes uh, manga, which is Japanese like comic books. Oh, that's where yeah. it's from. Okay. And they really inspire me for like art and stuff. So yeah. I took one of his panels. I redrew it and kind of made it into more of my style. Good. Yeah. yeah. I love the hair going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going out there. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you. Could yeah. you read it for us? Because I can't. I can't yeah. read it from the. the text. Could you read it? It's. Yeah. Uh, it's. I ended up like this because of this town. Because of this town is cursed by a spiral. It's really kind of hard to. We encourage no, you to just read by that. Ma graphic novels and math. So, yeah, that's great. And uh, I have $100 for you as well. Thank you. I leave that all of them. That's all of them. We, we like photos as a council. Could we get a picture with all of them in the front and us standing in the back? Oh, that's great. Can all of you come up? Group photo? You too. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. If they could stand by their group photo, however. Yes, we can maybe spread them out a little bit. Yeah, you guys can get them up. Or you guys stand in front of us right here. Come up here. Yeah, yeah. So that your okay. parents can get them to talk to each other. Yeah, you can maybe keep your slides there, and then we can all see them. Yeah. And you guys come in front of us. Aren't you amazed at all the talents we have? Yeah. Congratulations, you guys. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, Miley, I think you come up for this one as well. Um, this is for the 2019 Library Community Champion, Nancy Peak. Correct? We'll do Nancy first. Okay. Okay, Nancy first. Okay. I can rest. Whereas recognizing that the success of any public library is enhanced and sustained by dedicated citizens, the Durango Public Library Advisory Board will single out certain individuals for particular appreciation through its Library Community Champion Initiative. The awarding of this personal distinction honors singular achievement and commitment on behalf of the library and in turn the community. And whereas Nancy Peek was nominated... Issues have been detected. Oh! <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> sorry. Whereas Nancy Peek was nominated for the Library Community Champion Award for her role on the Friends of the Durango Public Library Board from 2007 to the present day, and whereas Nancy served and continues to serve in multiple roles on the board, including as an at-large mem member, at large member, the public relations and publicity chair, the vice president and the president, <laughs> and whereas Nancy was nominated for her tireless and enthusiastic service to the friends of the library and to the library itself, including mentoring new volunteers and board members, and whereas the press, as president, Nancy fostered a positive and symbiotic relationship between the Friends Board and the Library Advisory Board, which was a relationship that was in need of some nurturing and leadership. And whereas Nancy, as president, was both a great fiscal manager and a personal manager, keeping the Friends motivated in their performance of the difficult tasks, including operating the bookstore, sorting the many, the many book donations, and organizing the periodic book sales. And whereas through her leadership, the Friends flourished, making them a valuable asset to the Durango Public Library and contributing thousands of dollars for programs, equipment, and more. And whereas the Durango Public Library Advisory Board wishes to recognize Nancy Peake publicly for her dedication to the Durango Public Library, our community, and all that she did and continues to do to make the Durango Public Library and the Friends of the Library a success. Now, therefore, I, Melissa Youssef, Mayor of Durango, Colorado, do hereby recognize Nancy Peake as the 2019 Library Community Champion on this day, October 15th, in Durango, Colorado. And this really belongs to all the members of the Friends of the Library. Oh, that's somebody. I have to steal something for um, Amy. <laughs> the, one, the one behind. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, we have another one. I was I'm covered in real case. We have another, oh, we have another 2019 Library Champion, Miley Kane. Come on up, please. I think I'm reading the whole thing again. <laughs> this is yeah, going to be fun. You can say ditto. 
I'm going to read it because I think you deserve it. Whereas recognizing that the success of any public library is enhanced and sustained by the dedicated citizens, the Durango Public Library Advisory Board will single out certain individuals for particular appreciation through its library community champion initiative. The awarding of this personal distinction honors singular achievement and commitment on behalf of the library and in turn the community. And whereas Miley Kane was nominated for the Library Community Champion Award for her role in the Friends of the Durango Public Library Board from 2014 to the present day. And whereas Miley served and continues to serve in m multiple roles on the board, including as, as an at-large member, book sales and bookstore chair, book sales and donations chair, president, vice president, and volunteer coordinator. And whereas Miley was nominated for her creati creativity, hard work, amazing attitude, tireless and support, tire tirelessness and support for the library, all without any fanfare. And whereas as president, Miley continued to foster a positive relationship with the library advisory board. And whereas Miley as president let friends meeting in the firm, but fair uh, meetings in a, led friends meetings in a firm but fair manner, but kept everything moving and got things done. Meetings which were enhanced by her intelligent questions, sense of humor, and encouragement, all of which created an effective friends of the library board. And whereas Miley keeps her books her, keeps her book clubs informed on the happenings of the library, which demonstrates her passion for all the library does for the community. And whereas the Durango Public Library Advisory Board wishes to recognize Miley Kane publicly for her dedication to the Durango Public Library, our community, and all that she did and continues to do to make the Durango Public Library and the Friends of the Library a success. Now, by, therefore, I, Melissa Yusuf, Mayor of Durango, Colorado, do hereby recognize Miley Kane as the 2019 Library Community Champion on this day, October 15th, in Durango, Colorado. Thank you. We have many out here who promote the library and its uses. Thank you. We are moving on to a review of the consent agenda. This part of the agenda is intended to allow the single council by a single motion to approve items that are otherwise considered routine or non-controversial. We will have no separate discussion of items under this part of the agenda unless a councilor requests that an item be removed from the agenda. And in that case, we will consider those items under agenda item number eight. Ms. Phillips, can you please read our consent agenda items? Sure. Items 6.1 through 6.3 are approval of minutes. 6.1, the special study session, September 17, 2019. 6.2, special meeting, October 1, 2019. 6.3, city council regular meeting, October 1, 2019. Items 6.4 and 6.5 are discussion and possible action items. 6.4 concerns the creation of a project and a resolution authorizing an additional appropriation in the airport capital projects fund for a commercial airport a apron rehabilitation project 6.5 concerns support of the mountain towns 2030 pledge items 6.6 .6 and 6.7 are requests for public hearings with the proposed date of november 5th 2019 6.6 .6 is to consider the 2020 proposed budget and highway users tax fund receipt 6.7 is to consider the 2020 annual appropriations ordinance. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Phillips. Do we have any counselor that would like to remove an item from the consent agenda? Yes. Yes, I'd like to remove uh, 6.5, uh, not because I think it's uh, not a good thing, I think it's a great thing, and I wanna make certain it doesn't get lost and that people watching have an understanding of uh, this important action. Excellent. Can I have a motion? to approve items withstanding item 6.5. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda, less item 6.5. Second. Ms. Phillips, may we have a roll? Councilor Baxter? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brookie? Yes. Councilor Noseworthy? Yes. And Mayor Yusuf? Yes. Councilor Noseworthy? Sure. Um, 
Assistant City Manager Kevin, can you maybe come up and talk about it? This is the um, Mountain State, uh, the Mountain Towns 2030 pledge, and it's toward our sustainability, which is, you know, uh, a goal of ours. And I thought maybe you'd just speak a little bit about it. I'm particularly interested in your efforts to engage the community around sure, that. Sure. So, uh, Kevin Hall, Assistant City Manager. Uh, Imogen Ainsworth, the city's sustainability coordinator, was invited um, uh, to a conference in Park City, along with a handful of other invited communities, mountain towns from around the, the Rocky Mountain uh, West. Uh, there's some connectivity with the Colorado Association of Ski Towns in terms of this effort. Uh, while she was there, there was uh, approximately uh, 34 communities in attendance, uh, very uh, similar type communities to Durango. They were talking about all of their individual initiatives and uh, while there, there was a discussion, a group discussion about wouldn't it be a good idea just to make a simple pledge. It's not co hard commitments of any particular goals or any particular timelines, uh, but just speaking to the, the necessity of working together on uh, common causes to <coughs> address some of these concerns that they were discussing relative to climate change um, and other uh, activities uh, in that regard. So the, the pledge is pretty standard and um, I'm just gonna read a couple of these lines real quickly. Uh, the first item is to lead community conversations about setting courageous and action-based climate goals and make significant impacts by 2030. So certainly that first one uh, fits in with what the council just approved uh, a little over a month ago in terms of some of our goals. Engage other leaders in our community, region, and state in aligning climate action. And then the third item was actively share and collaborate with other communities on implementing best practices and creating new solutions. So really the idea is it's, it's really, it's an online form. We, fill, uh, we, we sign on, then we will be part of press releases as the 34 communities that are doing a, a range of things. What the city will be doing here uh, in a handful of weeks is bringing together the stakeholders in the community who uh, we have in the room not that long ago, a full house, we're gonna invite those folks to sit down and just start talking about how they envision the, particularly the sustainability action plan update might look, how we will get to some of our goals. Staff has already met with some of the LPEA staff, so there's a lot of engagement already occurring. At some point after we have some of these initial dialogue uh, with the stakeholders, we'll open it up to a larger public conversation, probably in early 2020. So this seemed to fit really well in terms of the, the efforts we already have moving forward. Thank you, I think it's great. I met with uh, folks from the environmental community to, uh, earlier this week and they were asking how to be involved and it's great to hear that you'll be reaching out soon to get this uh, task force or stakeholder discussion. I think we've got a lot of expertise in this community and I look forward to working together with them. Thank you. Excellent, can I, uh, I look for a motion for item 6.5? I'll make a motion to approve item 6.5, the uh, action on supporting the Mountain Towns 2030 pledge. Second. Any further discussion? May we have a roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tim Brookie? Yes. Council Noseworthy? Yes. Councilor Baxter? Yes. Mayor Yusuf? Yes. Um, do we have any additional public participation? I don't believe that we do. Okay, moving on to our public hearings then. Um, we have two legislative and policy related <coughs> hearings tonight. Please note that this is an opportunity for citizens to provide formal input into City Council's decision making process. We welcome all public testimony for our public hearings, but we request that be relevant to the issue at hand. We do limit comments to three minutes. We're gonna have a staff report for these public hearings that will followed by any public testimony, questions from Council, response from staff, and I'll look for a motion from Council. With that, we are going to move on to item 10. On, I believe it's 10.2. Do you guys have 10.1.1? Okay. A public hearing to consider revisions to Chapter 3 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Durango related to alcoholic beverages. I'll take that one. Okay, great. Uh, Madam Mayor, the clerk's office who oversees the issuance of um, liquor licenses and the regulation of liquor. Uh, to a certain extent within the city. Uh, I spent a good deal of time going through the code as it exists, uh, primarily prompted by some significant amendments to state law around uh, the liquor code and the beer code. So as you know, the state law changed recently to allow for the sale of full strength beer in grocery and convenience stores. Um, our code 
uh, requires an update to bring it into compliance with those amendments. Uh, there are, and then during that process of reviewing, the clerk staff uh, found other um, areas that are either behind the times or need to be clarified. And I'll quickly run through some of those. Uh, the, the definitions uh, need to be updated to make them consistent with state law. And we need to remove references to 3.2 beer uh, since it's now been replaced with the new concept of uh, fermented malt beverage and 3.2 beer no longer really exists. Uh, we, they were talking about revising hours, the number of days allowed for various tastings per state law. They, there's some need to clarify liquor licensing issues re, uh, revolving around bistro permits, which are becoming more and more popular in the city. Um, there will be, there's a proposal to have uh, license renewal, renewals after 2021 to require uh, some proof that the establishment has engaged in uh, liquor uh, serving safety training, and then also replace where applicable the sites to the new statutes because the legislature moved all of the beer and liquor code to a completely different location in the statutes. So those are the highlights of the uh, items that will be proposed uh, to bring forth a new ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Mm -hmm. Do we have any public testimony for this? We do not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, questions from council? Pretty straightforward. Straightforward. It's pretty much housekeeping over the Housekeeping, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll look for a motion then. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the revisions to Chapter 3 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Durango related to alcoholic beverages. I'll second. I'll bring, a, I'll bring an ordinance. Okay, great. At a later time. Uh, yeah, next meeting. Okay. May we have a roll call, please? You bet. Councillor Baxter? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Brickey? Yes. Councillor Noseworthy? Yes. Mayor Yusuf? Yes. <coughs> Moving on to 10.1.2, this is a public hearing to consider text amendments to the Land Use and Development Code, Commercial Design Guide, and Downtown Overlay District Design Guidelines. Good evening, uh, Dan Armentano, uh, Community Development Department. This is a staff initiated request um, to amend the LEDC and uh, two of our advisory documents, uh, commercial design guide and the downtown design guidelines. Uh, let's start with a summary. Um, there's two changes proposed to the use zone matrix uh, for the light industrial zone. Um, we're gonna be proposing new standards for these two uses uh, in this zone. Um, they'll be allowed as limited use permits. Um, and minor changes to the recently adopted sign code, and then as described, um, changes to the two uh, design guideline documents. Um, those are focused on signage as well. Um, so the two new, two new uses that we're uh, proposing to add to the LI zone are uh, medical office and health and exercise club. Uh, both of these uses uh, were allowed in these areas under the previous code, um, and accordingly, they are prevalent within the zones, uh, within the zone. Um, and the medical office was a special use uh, in that zone, and uh, health and exercise club was a conditional use. So there are a number of, uh, of both of these, specifically medical offices um, in the LI zone. Um, just to, for a little background, this is mostly photo park. Um, some areas are not free. Um, these uses currently are non-conforming based on our uh, zoning code. So I mentioned they both be allowed as a limited use permit. Um, this is an administratively approved permit. They need to comply with standards that are laid out in our code. Um, so this is, these are the standards for the medical office. Um, the first is we'd like to limit the location um, to sites where the existing use is office. Um, staff is aware that the LI zone is, is, there's not that many sites that are zoned light industrial, so we want to try to preserve those sites for light industrial uses and not see a lot of conversion of these sites to medical offices. Um, and then also, uh, parking has been an issue for some of the medical offices in town. Um, it's, it's likely that some of our code requirements may um, underestimate the parking needs for this use. 
uh, another issue for this, uh, or, or another reason, sorry, I didn't mention this, but the, we'd like to require a special parking study uh, in the LI zone. Uh, for that reason, I just mentioned that additionally because there's no on-street parking in Bodo and also um, there's very limited on-street parking in the other areas where uh, the LI zone is prevalent. Um, then we've also got some standards uh, that are just in there to ensure that the design of the parking um, will ensure pedestrian safety. For health and exercise clubs, um, the main standard, the first standard is the use must be entirely within the building. Obviously it's an industrial zone. Uh, we don't want to see um, participants with these clubs running around and interfering with adjacent light industrial uses. Um, there's also a few areas with sidewalks, oops, a few areas with sidewalks in uh, Bodo and in the zone in general. Um, so we're requiring that the use be located entirely within the building. Um, and then similar requirements for parking uh, for health and exercise clubs as well, um, just designed to ensure pedestrian safety. Um, changes to the sign code, these are pretty minor. Um, the new sign code has tables that outline, uh, outline sign requirements by zoning. Um, they have most of the pertinent information for applicants and anybody that reviews uh, these tables to determine what their signage requirements are. However, uh, we omitted language that stated four signs needed to be allowed per parcel. Um, so we're just gonna append that to each of the tables. Um, then we also wanted to soften the 30 inch height requirement for monument sign bases. Um, this is just uh, just allows us a little bit more flexibility, uh, particularly in instances where signs are a little bit shorter. Um, in residential zo zones, uh, monument signs are only allowed to be six feet tall, so we have uh, some conflicts with that. Um, and then also uh, signs in the visibility triangle, um, we thought it would be acceptable to allow shorter bases as well. Uh, so this just gives us a little bit more flexibility in the sign code. Um, then the changes to the design guides, um, as I mentioned, these are all related to signage. With the, <coughs> excuse me, with the update of the new sign code, a lot of the language in both chapter six of the commercial design guide and chapter nine of the downtown district design guidelines um, was essentially rendered um, inaccurate or unnecessary. Um, a lot of the language in both of those design guides was added to the code. Um, so we're removing all that language and then we're also removing references to tables and text that um, either no longer apply or just incorrect. Um, we're gonna remove photos of signs that are non-conforming. Um, and then we're gonna add language describing standards for small portable signs. These are the A-frame signs that we are now allowing on the sidewalks. Um, and then also adding language describing scenarios where alternative compliance can be considered. Um, I'll go into that a little bit here. Next couple slides. <clears throat> um, so alternative compliance is essentially a sign variance, but it replaced sign variances and created a new procedure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, previously, they required DRB approval. Um, the code language in the new code on the alternative compliance section specifically references the sign design guidelines. Um, so we felt it would be helpful to incorporate some information on scenarios when this could be approved. Um, we felt that, that would provide some clarity to both staff and applicants in terms of um, understanding before they apply whether or not they had a chance of uh, getting the alternative compliance. And this is the exact language that we're proposing to add to the design guides. Um, this was in the staff report, so I'm not gonna read this uh, specifically, uh, but I'm happy to take any questions on that if you guys have them. Um, so just to summarize, uh, we're gonna be legalizing existing non-conforming uses in the light industrial zone and create standards for them. Um, we're improving the clarity and flexibility of the sign code, uh, specifically the tables and uh, that piece about the basis for monument signs, and then simplify and align the design guidelines with the new sign code. Um, these are the LEDC criteria for text amendments. Staff feels that this proposal meets these criteria. Um, the design review, review board did have an option or the, the ability to, uh, to review this, uh, specifically the changes to the design guidelines. Um, so staff was able to incorporate their comments before taking 
uh, the request to Planning Commission. Um, Planning Commission heard this on September 23rd and voted 5-0 to recommend approval. Um, and here is the recommendation and a motion. So, thank you. Happy to take any questions. I don't think we have any public testimony for any of these hearings. Um, so, questions from Council? So, uh, four signs per parcel, where did that originate from or how did that work? That's actually been, that was in code before the most recent update as well. Um, Businesses do have the ability to get around that through creating a master sign program, which is, which is essentially a custom sign code for their property. Uh, we do quite a few of those for um, a lot of properties that have multiple businesses, multi-tenant buildings. Um, a lot of buildings downtown have those um, in commercial centers, so. Does that also apply to residential? Um, residential is a little different. Let's think if I can recall the, the requirement, I think they're, they're limited based on square footage. I want to say it's 24 total square feet of signage that they can have is in, in the form of a yard sign. Um, so I don't think they have a number that they're no. limited to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions from council? Good cleanup. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah it looks uh, like it. We probably should have looked, taken a better look at those eight frames. <laughs> when, when we had them, we had enough discussion about them at the time. But uh, it's good that we were getting cleaned up, and it, it's more informative, I think, for uh, as you were mentioning, give folks, uh, the lay people, especially that are, you know, their first interaction with the, our planning department is oftentimes a sign for their business, and uh, so thank you for doing that. Looking for a motion then from council, please. Someone gets to read that up there. Well, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> um, I would move that the council adopt the proposed text amendments to the Land Use and Development Code, Chapter 6 of the Commercial Design Guide, and Chapter 9 of the Downtown Overlay District Design Guidelines, with the findings stated in the September 23, 2019 Planning Commission Staff Report, and direct the City Attorney to prepare the enacting ordinances to adopt these text amendments and incorporate them for a first reading at a regularly scheduled council meeting. The second. Second. Any further discussion, counselors? Yes, actually. Um, I would like to say that um, th these signs um, are particularly applicable to the Bodo Park area and the um, light industrial zone that we have there. And unfortunately, the original intent of Bodo, fortunately or unfortunately, has been changing. And it's no longer the light industrial manufacturing center that we have origin that it was originally designated as. So I would like to see us put some attention to focusing on where we might have <coughs> true light industrial and manufacturing for um, businesses that are trying to locate in the Durango area. So I just wanted to emphasize that. I think that's incredibly important. Thank you. With that, Ms. Phillips, may we have a roll call, please? Councilor Noseworthy? Yes. Councilor Baxter? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Brookie? Yes. Mayor Yusuf? Yes. Moving on to our quasi-judicial hearings. Um, our quasi-judicial hearings is, uh, require a legal process in which facts and opinions are presented to city council who serve as unbiased decision makers. The applicant has the burden of proof on these proceedings. Staff will present the staff report. I'll open the public hearings. Um, we will have questions from council, response from staff and, and or the applicant and developer, and then we will have uh, close the public hearing and uh, have a decision by city council. And we'll start with 10.2.1, which is a public hearing to consider the Borrego Lot 1 Minor Subdivision Preliminary Plat 780 Hidden Valley Circle. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council, Nicole Kelly, and Assistant Director for Community Development Department. Um, and I'm representing Craig Roser, who is not here with us tonight. Um, so covering his item, which is Borrego Lot 1. I do have a disclosure. The applicant for this item is Greg Boysen, the city um, engineer, and we are in the same department. Um, so I just want to disclose that, but he's not asking for any variances and what they're asking for meets all the standards of the code. Um, and so I just want to point that out and that our staff is used to doing a lot of different projects, even for other city departments. We review everything, development review. So it's not uncommon for us to have somebody in our department, but I just wanted to point that out. Moving forward. Um, so this is a simple subdivision. 
at 780 Hidden Valley Circle. Um, it's two, it's one lot that will be created into two lots, lot 1A and lot 1B. Um, both lots do meet our minimum lot size of 8,500 square feet, so they're quite large, larger than that minimum lot size. So like I said, no variances are requested as part of this subdivision. Um, just to orient you, Hidden Valley Circle, um, this is Arroyo, and so this is a lot in question. It is zoned um, EN4C, which is our single family zone. Um, and then on the comp plan, it's also, um, actually I did it backwards. The comp plan, it's single family, and then it's zoned EN4C as well. So both single family, um, again, 8,500 square foot minimum lot size. And um, these two lots would be approximately 14,854 for lot 1A and 23,479 for lot 1B, so quite larger than the minimum lot size. Um, it's a different configuration because we have also a minimum frontage for streets, which is 50 feet, so this lot had to cover that frontage. They're gonna have a shared access drive with a maintenance agreement in place, um, and all public, um, Infrastructure is in place for this lot, so curb gutter sidewalk and utilities are already coming to um, both lots. Just a closer up version. Um, it does meet our minor subdivision standards in the Land Use and Development Code, which is um, in your packet. Um, so both lots will exceed the lot sizes, the minimum lot size. Uh, again, they'll share existing curb cut and one driveway, so we won't be seeing a, se a second driveway on that section of street. Utilities are already um, serving the one lot. Uh, the final plat will need to delineate where 30% slopes are because our land use code does not allow development in 30% slopes, so when we work with them on the final plat, we'll want to see that. Um, and then foundation and grading and drainage plans do need to be designed by a Colorado um, engineer. And then um, there are no public improvements because they're already all to the properties. And um, appropriate development fees are gonna be required when the lot is developed, so schools, parks. Um, we have not received any public comments on this process. Um, and we did take this to the Planning Commission on August 26th, and um, they had a unanimous vote in favor of the subdivision. So the recommended action is to approve the proposed subdivision with the findings um, as in conditions as stated in the staff report and on this slide. I'll keep it pretty simple because it's a simple subdivision, but if you have any questions, I can answer those for you. We don't have any public testimony, so if there's questions from council. It's pretty simple. Okay, and nothing from Mr. Boyson. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, no questions, then I'll look for a motion. I'll move that we approve the proposed subdivision with the finding that the subdivision meets the subdivision evaluation criteria of the LUDC and the zoning dimensional standards of the EN4C zone with, with the conditions as submitted in the report. Second. Mm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was on the planning commission too. I <laughs> uh, further discussion from council. Um, may we have a roll call, please? You bet. Mayor Pro Tim Bricky? Yes. Councillor Baxter? Yes. Councillor Noseworthy? Yes. Mayor Yusuf? Yes. 10.2.2, a public hearing to approve a preliminary minor subdivision for Twin Buttes Phase 1, filing 1B, Lot 55. <laughs> Good evening, Mark Williams from Community Development. This is a two-lot subdivision in Twin Buttes, and this is the, we've done a handful of these now, and every time we're bringing these to City Council, we wanna also use this as an opportunity to remind Council that staff in Twin Buttes is working together to revise all of Twin Buttes um, planning documents because the situation out there, they feel has changed a lot, and they wanna redo what they're doing. So um, to refresh your memory, the original approvals were generally about a decade ago for 655 units plus 135 ADUs are allowed. What we've been doing lately is updating the conceptual plan, which is sort of the general broad uh, land use plan 
think this is low density, medium density, just sort of blobs on a page. Uh, the development agreement and also the design guidelines. We think we have a draft housing compliance agreement. And now we're gonna dive into the codes and standards which are a more detailed design document. The plan is to have all this early in 2020 before planning commission and city council. The reason they're doing this is they found that bigger houses on bigger lots are harder to sell. Smaller homes, which are more affordable on smaller lots are easier to sell. So um, that's sort of the, the driving idea behind all of this. So to the specific subdivision that we're talking about tonight, this is in filing 1B, so it's the second filing. The filings are the smaller geographical areas, it goes filing phase, and then the whole Twin Buttes project. 1B is north of 1A, and this is the lot we're talking about. And this is the same map, but with the, the images grayed out slightly so you can get a better picture of the lot layout. These lots tend to be 14 to maybe 18,000 square feet in size. This lot is close to 18,000 square feet before it is subdivided. The resulting subdivision will create two lots. The westernmost is 7,800 square feet. The easternmost is a little under 10,000 square feet. Originally, this lot was meant to be uh, subdivided this way, but access to the easternmost lot was going to be off Twin Buttes Avenue, which presented a couple of issues. Uh, the first issue was the cross slope on the sidewalk in front of the, the houses would have been too steep for ADA compliance. So uh, just a simple demonstration, a cross slope can be up to 2% on a sidewalk. If it is more than that, it doesn't comply. And that was a real challenge. The other reason is Twin Buttes Avenue is a collector street and it'll get even busier in the future. So if we can avoid having direct access from lots onto collector streets, that's always a good thing. And in this situation, there was an option to do that, which was to take access from Wild Iris Avenue. Because of that, um, we wanted to have a safer situation, have this access over here. So this will be a shared driveway. They'll have legal language on the easement uh, about the easement on the plat so that they have a shared driveway easement. They'll also have a maintenance agreement that if the driveway needs to be repaired, that's all uh, up front and no one will be surprised by any kind of financial obligations in the future. These are the lot uh, building envelopes for the two houses. This is also a large drainage feature in Twin Buttes, if you've been up to Twin Buttes, you know there's a lot of topography. There's a lot of drainage, and um, this won't be impacted by the houses that are being built. And just to remind you that um, the drainage in Twin Buttes is a little different from the way we do it in other parts of Durango. Because of the topography, the city tracks all the impervious surface that's built at Twin Buttes. So the roof of the houses and the driveways and the sidewalks it goes into the calculations for each house, and we keep a running tally to, um, there's a cap at some point, probably decades from now. So as I mentioned earlier, the lots will be around 7,800 square feet. Uh, the one will, the other one will be about 10,000 square feet. These two lots also meet the city's standards for street frontage and have adequate access and um, have adequate size. All of the easements will be adequately designed for and will not be impacted. This is a preliminary review, so if council approves this, this would come back to the staff for a staff level review uh, before um, the mylars are produced and the mayor would sign the mylars. City council approved this also last month at their meeting by a vote of five to nothing. Planning commission, you mean? Sorry, planning commission. A little bit ahead of myself. <laughs> Just, I, I thought I was here. <laughs> uh, so we had a couple of conditions. One is standard public improvements agreement. That's for work in the right of way. They have to give us a financial guarantee. And if for some reason that doesn't ever happen, the work doesn't happen, then the city has that money and we can do it ourselves. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, um, there'll be a plat note about the shared driveway and the maintenance agreement. 
So the staff recommendation is to the Twin Buttes Phase 1, Filing 1B, Lot 55, Preliminary Minor Subdivision, direct the applicant to prepare the final plat and mylars and authorize the mayor to sign the final plat and mylars once all necessary revisions are made. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Do we have a presentation from the applicant from Belver? Don't see the applicant here. Yes. Okay. okay. Who, who is the applicant? Uh, Jacob Bleff and Rob Middleton. Okay. All right. Uh, no public testimony. Questions from council? Okay. Um, I put my glasses on. I can I can make the motion. <laughs> Excellent. I will. Yes, please. This is I move that we approve the Twin Buttes Phase One Filing One B Lot Fifty Five Preliminary Minor Subdivision. Direct the applicant to prepare the final plat and mylars, and authorize the mayor to sign the final plat mylars once all necessary revisions are made. Second. Second. Further communicate or discussion. Discussion from council. Thank you. May we have a roll call, please, Ms. Phillips? Councilor Baxter? Yes. Councilor Noseworthy? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Brookie? Yes. Mayor Yusuf? Yes. Moving on to council reports and actions. Councilors, any updates? Um, actually, I think we um, skipped something. Did I skip something? Yes. Uh, oh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to interim. City, uh, it's right here on my notes too. Uh, we have a new agenda item that we're adding, interim city manager update, Amber Blake. Um, she's gonna get us up to date on some issues. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mary Smith and council. So we're, I'm hoping to take the brief moment in these council meetings to update council and the community on happenings and things that are of interest that are going on in the operations of the city. So it'll be a work in progress and we'll mm -hmm. continue to add items. I wanted to start out by mentioning a couple of additions that we have to our study session calendar that came out of our budget retreat. So after the two day budget retreat last Monday and Tuesday, we've made a couple of amendments to our study session calendar. On November 5th, we will be discussing total compensation and the compensation study with city council um, for one hour. We have a lot of during that study session. On November 12th, we have moved reconciliation and we will be discussing policy, city council policy on reserve balances, a policy on how to spend the 2019 dedicated tax, a policy on expending 2005 and 2015 dedicated tax. And then we will also at that meeting on the 12th have an update from the Parks and Recreation Department on the 32nd Street Bridge design and an updated cost estimate. That, and then we have moved reconciliation to November 19th. Um, staff is actively working on the budget, taking the direction that we heard from council during the retreat. And we're excited to have the additional two study sessions to gain further direction so that we can move forward with a budget that we are all in alignment on for 2020. Um, the monthly financial report, our financials closed uh, last Friday. And so we will be, I'll be bringing forward a financial report to city council on November 5th, or not, yes, on November 5th. Um, and that will also include the third quarter capital improvements update. Um, and then I wanted to also mention that the terminal area plan for the airport will be coming in front of city council also on November 5th during the study session. But I wanted to urge the public to check out the website on virtual city hall and take the survey. Um, this is a revision to the master plan looking at what updates are most favorable for the terminal. Uh, moving forward, there was an open house last night of which there were 17 attendees and Tony, our airport director, said that we had um, a great turnout and lots of great comments. So we encourage the input and we welcome comments from the public. Um, and then finally, we have our Colorado Municipal Clerks Association is in town this week for the state conference. We're hosting that here in Durango. There are 120 clerks here in Durango this week. Um, and our own Chris Vicari, Deputy City Clerk, has been 
appointed as the vice president of the state association. Nice. So she has a multi-year term and we'll be moving it from vice president next, she'll be vice president next year and then we'll move into the presidency nice. and then past president. So we're excited to have her um, representing Durango in a leadership role at the statewide level. And that is what I have for this evening. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank thank you, you. very much. Nice addition. Now move on to council reports and actions. So I wanted to ask a question because we were going to ask about the advisory board uh -huh. working group at the budget meeting and we forgot to discuss that. Um, we were not here originally and we had talked about whether we should have two or three people on the um, advisory oh. board hmm. idea of working group and the com Chris, uh, Councilor Bettine mentioned that if it's only two, then we don't have to notice it all the time, mm -hmm. which is really nice. We get two people working on it, and then we bring it to the mm -hmm. council for public discussion and all of that. So we, you weren't there to weigh in on whether you wanted to participate, right. so we didn't want to make a decision without you. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I witnessed it on the video, and that was an interesting discussion. And, uh, yeah, uh, so... Yeah, I don't know who's interested. I would be. Well, Barb and I are. Uh, we were obviously interested, so we were right. just waiting to get your input and see what you. But want. I'm happy to step aside, Dean, if you want to take that on. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm happy to uh, let you guys take it. I mean, it's going to come back to uh, mm -hmm. full council for decisions. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm. I'm totally happy with that. Okay. okay. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, but I, and, and appreciate the uh, the uh, extension of that. <laughs> Uh, in my absence. Well, and I just forgot about it at the budget meeting. So um, we, we had a natural lands board meeting last night, Monday night, and uh, we had um, some rousing topics. One of them is e-bike use on soft surface oh, trails. Thank you. So um, we had several uh, public comments and that conversation is ongoing. There are a lot of things happening at a state, federal level about it. So we have the, um, the Department of the Interior, which has allowed uh, e-bikes on their lands, which include uh, National Forest or National Park, I can't remember, National Park and BLM land. So there are some major issues in those organizations going on as how do we deal this and when do we implement it and what do we do? <coughs> um, and so uh, we're having that conversation also at a city level and no decisions are being made right now, but it probably will undergo some sort of a study would be my guess. Like a trial or? So trials have been recommended, um, and I think that that's probably the direction we're headed, but the challenge is that most of our soft surface trails are inter interconnecting systems, and it would be great if we could find a place, um, what, Twin Buttes was one of the suggestions, that's an isolated area in the sense that it doesn't connect to every other trail in town so that you could more easily designate it as one type of, or as an additional type of use and not have people going elsewhere. Uh, so it'll be an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to hearing more about it. I have it. a question on that. Um, maybe you could, if you don't have an answer to this, you could take it to your advisory board. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked by a community resident if there would be an opportunity for public engagement in those conversations at the at some point in these conversations. Oh, absolutely. There will be. Oh, absolutely. At the advisory board level. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be very similar to when we. Um, uh, went out to about having e-bikes on the Animus River Trail mm -hmm. and about the entire public process that that went through and then with the trial and So it'll be that. very well advertised. Oh, absolutely. Lots of opportunity for people absolutely. to speak. And I, and I have no timeline at this point for when that actually happens, but it will definitely work that way. Thank you for that update. Will you please keep us informed on that? I will. I know it's an evolving issue. Any other updates for you? No, okay. thank you. Uh, yes. I have two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we get a lot of mail, and uh, we welcome it. I, I want to recognize that we really do uh, enjoy that. At least I speak for myself. We do enjoy that um, communication with the public. I recognize that we don't always aren't always able to get back to you right away. Often that means we're looking into a subject matter, or we're um, we need to do a little more research into that. But we do take seriously that engagement. But I came back to the, uh, into my mailbox and I got this great letter. I don't know if anybody else on city council got one, but I couldn't respond because the person didn't leave a telephone number or an email. Oh, right. So I'm gonna read it so the community has a sense of it and I'm gonna ask this person to give me a call or this person's parent or parents to give me a call. But I just thought 
it was also gave us some direction of things we should be doing as a council. So it says, Dear City Hall, if you've not seen from the protest on September 20th, we care about our earth. I protested, we protested, the community protested. We need rights for nature, for the saving of earth. We will protest until you realize that it is a crisis. I don't know everything, but I do know this. We don't have another planet, so we better start fixing this one. We don't have all the knowledge to save the earth, but we can start by planting trees. Here you go, yes. We, have, we also have the problem of fossil fuels, and this is quote, less drive, more ride. Let's ride bikes more. I hope my letter shows the love we have for the earth. Sincerely, and because this is a public record, I can, Kara M. O'Donnell. So Kara, if you're listening or if your friends are listening, please call me at 633-0448. Or if your parents or parent or parents, I'd like to set up a time to meet you. I think it's great to have activism in the community. And who knows, maybe a new city council recruit in time. <laughs> so the other thing I'd like to, so thank you. Thank you, Kara, for reaching out and wanting you to know we got your message. Um, bears, I just wanted to talk a little bit about it because I've seen uh, evidence of bears around town and I just wanted to remind folks to lock their, to make certain that they're being bear smart with their containers. If you see uh, signs of bear that have maybe overturned a trash can or thing, we have the non-emergency number. Amber, help me out. Is it 382-9200? I think that's the number. Dispatch. Two, two, dispatch. Five, nine, eight, three, eight, five, two, nine, two, nine, two, nine. Yeah. Three, eight, five. Two, I'm a little dyslexic. Three, yeah. eight, five, yeah. two, nine, zero, zero. So that's the number to call if you see uh, some concerns about particularly overturned trash and whatnot. Um, we do follow up on that. So uh, the bears are putting on their calories. So let's, uh, let's be bear smart. Thank you. That was my fault. I'm the dyslexic one. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brookie, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I was wanted to talk about the airport uh, commission, and, oh, and as been mentioned, they, our new master plan is uh, up for uh, public input. And if you can get online and comment about that, that would be awesome. Um, we're, they're going to compile those thoughts and bring it to council. And it is. Uh, this was a result of. Uh, uh, we're, it's an alternative based on the fact that we were able to acquire a significant piece of land on the terminal side of the runways. And so we're looking at the, al the pr previous alternative uh, suggested that a relocation of the terminal to the opposite or easterly side of the runway was going to be the best option. And uh, now we're with more land, we have a, a, a much better opportunity on the, on the, to add on and expand our existing facilities. So, that's happening. Uh, we are going to have a ribbon cutting on our uh, on the uh, uh, terminal improvements. Unfortunately, it's not uh, because it's behind the security. It's not uh, open to the public, but uh, that will be announced here in, in uh, later in October. Uh, the Library Commission, my other uh, liaison appointment, is uh, going to have a strategic receipt, re retreat, I should say, in the first week of November. And uh, you heard a little bit earlier this evening about all the great things that the library is doing. And uh, I can't, uh, I've really never worked with such a forward group thinking group of folks on, uh, on the library, or in any commission, but the library commission is definitely uh, 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 looking forward to the long-term use of that library as a hub in our community. Uh, I will be attending the CAST Colorado Association of Ski Town meeting uh, October 24th and 25th. This this one happens to be in Aspen. Uh, it's the uh, itinerary is mostly climate or the agenda, I should say, is climate related issues as well as some legislative update on short term uh, rentals. Uh, posted by Senator Bob Rankin uh, is looking for legislative input for state uh, uh, new state legislation around short term rentals in communities. And CAST was kind of the the uh, initial organization that brought to uh, the forefront legislation throughout the state uh, with regard to short-term rental uh, legislation and uh, licensing. Uh, I should uh, say also in the realm of never leave town when there is a real or perceived uh, potential tiebreaker. <laughs> uh, I have been, I've missed the past two meetings. Uh, the first meeting was, uh, I was attending a, a downtown Colorado Inc. Uh, seminar up in Montrose 
uh, with Kevin Hall and Alex from the Community Development Department. Uh, the subject was urban renewal. It was the follow-up to the symposium that we held here. Uh, that was the evening that you uh, had the pleasure of discussing uh, water and sewer rates. Mm -hmm. I drove back into pound town about 11.30, turned the corner here, and the lights were still on at City Hall. I suggested that, uh, or I thought to myself, uh, it's better just to go home. <laughs> so, but uh, thank you for your good discussion that evening. Uh, the second, October 1st, I happened to my partner is a uh, rare lung disease researcher, and she was able to give a, uh, a, a speech in Madrid, Spain. So I took that opportunity to visit my family in Spain as well on October 1st when you had the opportunity to talk about the uh, Parks and Rec Master Plan. Also, an, an, uh, a tiebreaker that I could have been uh, in assistance with you that evening. Uh, both, both those issues, you know, we will talk about again. So. Uh, uh, we will, uh, and I look forward to that, and, and I appreciate your robust discussion those evenings without me. Uh, I hope you didn't miss me. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I just re remembered one other thing. Please. I believe on Saturday the strategy and long-term finance committee application process begins. We'll post. Yes, yeah, so it'll be posting on the city website, and will it be? We'll run for 10 days. Okay. So we are reaching out to our community members, um, and you can read what the experience um, desires are and the the mission of the Strategy and Long-Term Finance Committee, which we've been working on for about a month and a half, and we've passed it, and mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to having assistance with what types of creative, innov innovative, efficient, um, and anything financial you can think about we can do for our city and have a better uh, decision process, bringing in people who have expertise and knowledge from a variety of fields, um, economics, data processing, data research, all sorts of interesting things. So please check that out on the website on Saturday, and we're hoping we get lots of applications. And we're looking for how many members on that committee? Five at this point in time. Right. Okay. Thank you. I have one please thing, but you might say it. So if you no, don't, go ahead. I don't want to steal your thunder. No, go. you already got my clerks. Oh. <laughs> and I got his terminal aerial plan. I should have got to send you my report beforehand. <laughs> you go ahead. Do you have the ribbon cutting? Date. The oh, no, you go. Santa Rita Water Reclamation Facility mm -hmm. ribbon cutting is set for November 1st at 10 a.m. Wow. I won't so be the largest I'm infrastructure project okay. that the city has November 1st done and embarked upon. I, I'll be out of town. One of those. That's a Friday, too. It's a Friday, 10 a.m. Okay. Thank at, you. I'm guessing it's at Santa Rita. It is at Santa Rita. <laughs> I'll be out of town for that. Dean will be here. Well, I promised the Herald that we'd do a sniff test. And uh, so without you, we'll have to delay that action. No, that's all, that's all right. I've already been hazed Be my guest. <laughs> okay. with the old plant at the old plant. Council Bertine and I were hazed already once. All right, all right. So this, you, you'll have to take over for me on this one. Sounds good. Okay. All right, I was just going to remind everyone that Durango Fall Cleanup continues through November 1st for yard waste only. For more information, go to durangogov.org slash cleanup. And I have office hours next Monday, October 21st. 12 o'clock, 12 to 1 at the city manager's conference room. And I think everything else has been covered. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. All right, with that, we will adjourn. Our next meeting is Tuesday, November 5th.